In the last two lessons, we discussed information that was included in the Building Analyst Standard, but not in BPI 1200. Now we'll look at some items that were not included in BA, but have been added to BPI 1200. Remember, BA is only 17 pages, but BPI 1200 is 64 pages. So it's fair to assume that the 1200 standard contains a lot of new information. One entirely new section provides detailed specifications that diagnostic equipment should meet. Let's take a closer look. Section 7.1 of BPI 1200 details equipment requirements for combustible gas and carbon monoxide detection, carbon monoxide measurement, depressurization, and spillage tests. Of course, as is the case with all of the requirements contained in these standards, it's up to local programs to decide which specific line items they want to enforce with extra documentation and QA inspections. The BPI 1200 standard includes requirements for gas leak detectors that the most commonly used models that I've seen in the field don't meet. It requires that these instruments now be able to measure ambient gas levels in units of percentage of the lower explosive limit. As of early 2017, the least expensive model available that meets these requirements costs around $400. Adopting this requirement could be an expensive change for programs and participating contractors. Having used one of these models, though, I will say that it's a definite improvement to get not just a beep when gas is present, but also a readout expressing how close the gas level at any location is to being high enough to cause an explosion. BPI 1200 also includes requirements for carbon monoxide measurement that many commonly used models don't meet. First, this standard requires measurement of air-free CO concentration. This requires both a carbon monoxide and an oxygen sensor. Many single-purpose instruments like the Bacharach Monoxer don't do this. They only provide as-measured CO. In practicality, this new standard requires a full-function combustion analyzer for carbon monoxide measurements. In addition, BPI 1200 includes accuracy requirements that some common models don't meet. For example, my Testo 327 combustion analyzer has an accuracy of plus or minus 20 parts per million from 0 to 400 parts per million of carbon monoxide, but the standard requires an accuracy of plus or minus 10 parts per million or better. Finally, the standard requires that all models be equipped with a NOx filter. This is because without a NOx filter, the meter will read an inaccurately high CO level. Most Bacharach combustion analyzers don't have an internal NOx filter, though one can be added externally, spliced into the intake tube. BPI 1200 includes a requirement that auditors performing CO inspection shall be equipped with a dedicated ambient CO monitor while in the work environment. This seems to imply that using a combustion analyzer for ambient CO measurements is not acceptable presumably because it can't simultaneously measure the flue gas CO and the ambient CO in the combustion appliance zone, so separate instruments are required. Specifications for this equipment were included in draft versions of the BPI 1200 standard, but they were removed. So based on the text, any ambient CO monitor is acceptable as long as it is operated in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. BPI 1200 includes a very simple statement about equipment used to test spillage. It must include a mirror, smoke pencils, or other smoke visualization equipment, like a smoke puffer, a water-based smoke generator, or an incense stick. BPI 1200 also includes resolution and accuracy requirements for manometers used to set up the combustion appliance zone in a worst-case configuration. The commonly used manometers supplied with blower door kits meet these specifications. However, some of the less expensive manometers often used by HVAC techs for static pressure measurements do not. Based on this review, BPI 1200 includes detailed minimum specifications for diagnostic equipment, which can be very useful for auditors who are acquiring new tools. However, these requirements are fairly stringent and much of the equipment currently in use in the industry does not comply with them. If you're an auditor, review your program requirements carefully to see if they've adopted these specifications. If so, you may need to upgrade some equipment. If you're a program manager, think carefully before adopting these requirements because they may force your contractors to abandon existing equipment and spend a substantial sum on upgrades.